Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the FRCS Viva practice session. So today we are going to discuss on bladder cancer. Uh, we have got a couple of trainees who has agreed to record this session for the benefit of future trainees for their revision. So we'll start now. Um, you are sitting in your one-stop clinic and you are reading a letter from the GP. Is it for a two-week wait um, pathway referral of a 68-year-old gentleman with a visible hematuria? Um, uh, how, how are you going to proceed in his case? Right. I see him in, in the clinic as mentioned with the cancer specialist nurse. Um, I'd like to uh, start with a focus history, uh, do a chaperone examination and then prescribe investigations. I will ask him for how long he has had these symptoms, uh, what kind of uh, immaturity it is, uh, whether he is having clots, whether he is having any, uh, episodes of retention along with it, whether he is having any colic. Um, I will also ask him for any low unit tract symptoms, otherwise in terms of his voidic and storage uh, symptoms. Um, I will ask him for whether he has had a, a fever or any other incidents and red flag signs um, such as a weight loss or pedal edema or, or lower limb swelling. Um, I'd ask him for history of his uh, smoking, if he's had exposure to chemotherapy, particularly cyclophosphamide, and if he's had any radiotherapy in the past or any previous abdominal or uh, urological operations. Um, as part of the ex chaperone examination, I'd uh, examine his abdomen, uh, palpate his uh, lower abdomen, check if he's got a palpal bladder, um, evaluate his external genitalia. I would also, with consent, administer a digital rectal examination. Um, I um, I would uh, examine his um, extremities for edema and check for jaundice. Um, the investigations, I, I'd like to ask for um, a full blood count, uh, using these with uh, uh, theapnin in case imaging is required. Uh, I'll ask for urine routine, urine cytology, um, and um, I'll, I'll take take things from there. I'll be consenting him for a flexible cystoscope. Okay, so he's... 68 year old as mentioned uh, and four weeks history of visible hematuria no urine retention no dysuria no flank pain he is not on any regular medications no family history he is a smoker of about 10 cigarettes per day for almost 25 years um, clinical examination otherwise normal no pedal edema DRA normal um, you said that you will do urine cytology. Will you do urine cytology for all patients coming to hematuria? I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I'll take that back. Urine cytology may not be uh, very sensitive when there is a hematuria. It's not cost effective either. So I'll, I'll take that back. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, so, so this is a scenario now. His bloods are normal, otherwise normal. Urine dipstick ex except for four bloods in the urine dipstick. Everything else is normal. No signs of infection. Um, so, uh, how are you going to proceed? So, you said that you're going to do a flexible cystoscope, isn't it? Yes. So, I'll explain to the patient that his referral was because hematuria is, is a sign of uh, a possible bladder cancer. And from our uh, existing information, we know that about up to 25% of uh, referrals at his age for uh, visible hematuria turn out to be malignant. Uh, what I need to do to uh, complete his workup is to offer him a cystoscopic examination under local anesthesia. Uh, since he's come with visible hematuria, I'll also like to organize uh, um, um, upper tract imaging, which will uh, which will require him to visit a CT scanner and, and have contrast instilled as well. Okay. So, what's the what was the evidence that you said that? I mean, what what's the evidence base to say that twenty five percent will have? So, I I, uh, I appreciate this is not the most current evidence, but this is from uh, a cadre at all. Uh, where he, uh, he had a study on uh, outpatient uh, clinics where they had looked at uh, in the area of I in the area of IVUs they had done cytology flexible uh, cystoscopies as well as IVUs and found that uh, approximately 25 percent of patients referred for visible immaturity had um, urethral malignancies and the non visible immaturity was about 10 percent or so this was backed up by a subsequent study by Edwards et al uh, where they had a slightly lower incidence so about uh, 20 percent um, urethral cancer with visible immaturia and about 5% uh, with non-visible immaturia. Are there any new evidence for hematuria pathway? 
Um, I'm aware of uh, evidence for um, IT versus CT, but um, I'm, I can only quote the NHS guidelines. What is identified I study? Know. Have you heard about uh, identified? Yes, identified is a is a study which is uh, sponsored, which is done by Burst and partly uh, sponsored by the BOWS. Mm -hmm. So this was uh, this was to look at the um, outcomes of a visible imagery in uh, in one stop clinics. I'm I'm not sure of the the report. Okay, so and you said that you will do um, CT urogram, isn't it? Yes. And um, what's the reason that you are doing CT urogram? Uh, I, I'd, um, there are some clinics which will do an ultrasound uh, at, at the first instance, but uh, for visible imagery in, in my trust, we we would organize an urgent uh, CT urogram after checking his creatinine. Okay. Uh, what is the chance of or what's the incidence of upper tract urothelial cancer in visible hematuria? So uh, synchronous upper tract cancer could be about 5% to 10%. That's when a bladder cancer is diagnosed, isn't it? If yes, correct. Is, yes. If the patient is coming with visible hematuria, what's the chance okay. that? Okay. So you are doing the flexible cystoscopy for this patient. Yes. Um, the finding that you are seeing is a papillary tumor in the right posterolateral wall. Uh, you think that it is about between three to four centimeter, rest of the bladder normal, both UO seen normal. The tumor is very well away from the right UO. Uh, because it is a one-stop clinic, you already got the CT urogram uh, yes. and arranged and the upper tracts are normal. How are you going to proceed? His urethra is normal. How are you going to proceed? So I will uh, counsel this gentleman along with the cancer specialist nurse. I will explain to him that I have found a lesion which I will also show to him on table and say that this is very likely to be a, a malignant growth and that we need to remove this uh, completely and send it to the histopathologist for a final confirmation. We will also at, this, at that point of the operation get information about how deep that has gone and that will influence the, the management. I'll also inform him that the CT scan has so far shown that uh, there is not any upper tract involvement. Um, I'll speak to him about with a uh, procedure-specific consent form as well as give him, give him uh, patient information leaflet from BAUS. I will speak to him about um, the risks and complications of this procedure. Uh, primarily, I'd like to talk to him about the incidence of hematuria postoperatively, which is almost universal, some mild hematuria, which would settle in a few days. Um, I will try to make sure that I don't need to put a catheter, but he may need a catheter for a day or two if, if there is some bleeding at the operation. I will speak to him about the chance of having a, a bladder perforation since it's on the, uh, I think you mentioned towards the dome. Um, and, and that should be around less than 1%, which may need a very rarely an open operation to fix the, the perforation. Um, <clears throat> I'll also speak to him about the chance of finding other small malignancies which, which we had not found in the initial flexible scopy and those will also need to be removed. Uh, I will likely administer uh, intravascular chemotherapy at the end of this procedure, which will be uh, evacuated while he is in the recovery and that will not uh, affect his uh, discharge plan. He, he should be able to go home the same day, if not the next day, if there is uh, a bleeding or any other concerns. Um, subsequently, I will wait for the biopsy to come. Um, this will be then discussed along with imaging and information about his performance status in general health at the MDT meeting. And depending on the, on the stage, uh, then the decision will be taken about for the two. So you said that you will likely give single, um, single installation of intravascular chemotherapy, isn't it? Yes. Uh, why, why, why likely? So uh, that depends on a few things. One is uh, the size of the tumor, the presence of uh, whether it's unifocal or solitary. And, uh, and there should not be any other uh, complications such as a bladder perforation. Okay. Do you use any adjuvants um, in the sense that uh, for imaging? Yes. So that's why I mentioned that there may be uh, maybe some other lesions not picked up. So in, in my uh, practice, we use a narrow band imaging um, to detect, uh, to look at the tumor, look at all the other uh, normal areas of the bladder and also confirm that the resection has been complete. Uh, if you'd like me to describe it, this is done by a by a, a single switch on a, on the same set. It's an Olympus stack, 
and this uses a wavelength of blue and green light so that is usually between about um, 4 uh, 40 and 515 nanom uh, nanometers of light uh, this will have a differential absorption on the tumor will absorb more of the light because it is highly vascular whereas the rest of the mucosa might <coughs> reflect most of it and therefore look white there will also be a difference in the absorption based on the blue which will uh, which which will be uh, absorbed less or um, depth of penetration less than the green and this difference in absorption will create the contrast which allows us to compare with the white light imaging as to whether the resection is complete okay so you are seeing this patient uh, in the surgical arrivals on the day of the procedure you have consented the patient for uh, white light hysteroscopy plus <coughs> any, uh, narrow band imaging and single is, um, installation of intravesical so uh, which chemotherapy do you use so we will use a uh, intravesical mitomycin two being 40 mg uh, i mixed in uh, 40 ml of uh, saline uh, as well as uh, a dwell time of about 40 minutes okay so you have consented him for the siivc i mean uh, single dose intravesical installation of mitomycin uh, imagine that you are in the theater so um, the WHO checklist is done, the patient is in lithotomy position, uh, antibiotics given, uh, stop check done, you are um, going to start the procedure. Can you take me through the procedure? How, how do you do that? Yes, um, I will inform the anesthetist that I am about to start the procedure. I will initially do a preliminary scopy, which is usually with the 21 uh, French sheath uh, cystoscope. Uh, I will, uh, according to the the AU uh, advice, I will look at the urethra carefully, look at all the aspects of the bladder. I will also, sorry, prior to this, I will do a bimanual examination and check uh, if, uh, if the tumor is fixed. Um, subsequently, I will convert to using a resectoscope, which is usually 25 French. Um, I will use a narrow band imaging to, to uh, with a regular cystoscope to, to have a look at the bladder before this. Uh, with a, a resectoscope, um, I will be using bipolar energy. Uh, I will um, resect this tumor piecemeal. Um, since it's in the uh, towards the dome, I will I will take care um, not to cause a perforation. I will maintain the uh, ir irrigation uh, at a reasonable level and make sure that my outlet is working well. I, I do not want the bladder to be over distended. Um, having completed the superficial resection, I would, I prefer to um, evacuate these chips and then take a separate deep resection. Following completion of the deep resection, I will check back with the narrow band imaging to see if my resection is complete. And then I will fulgurate the edges as well as any uh, potential bleeders at the base of the bladder. Uh, I, I would have evacuated the deep uh, chips by then. Um, once I have checked that hemostasis is uh, complete, I will put in a catheter, um, make sure that uh, there is not excessive hematuria, then instill, uh, drain the bladder, instill the mitomycin, uh, clamp, uh, put on the stopcock and then uh, start the timer for the mitomycin and inform the nurses as well. Um, it will be a three-way and uh, we will remove the mitomycin in the recovery. I do, I do this myself and uh, subsequently, if necessary, start on irrigation or if not, the catheter will be removed. Okay, so we'll stop there. Um, uh, how was it? I think I gave, some, I gave you some wrong numbers. I'm sorry. No, no, I mean, you don't have to apologize, <laughs> please, because this is, a, this is like a learning thing only. Um, this is more like a reflection. So whatever you can't answer, maybe it's not because you don't have the knowledge. It's as, as I said before, it's because of the holding the nose. So never apologize. Okay? <laughs> um, and it, it's more so uh, you have to just go through the sorry. Uh, so, um, so you um, I, I think it, it was good, really good because there was no concern regarding any patient safety things like that a couple of things are uh, uh, th this are the time th I mean, this, is, this is one of the question where you can emphasize more on um, one-stop clinic concept yes where the patient will have the imaging on the uh, morning session in, yes. the, in the morning session and then come to the uh, outpatients in the afternoon to have the flexi um, so uh, we, we, we can emphasize on that part if that is good and regarding the identify study i highly recommend read identify study because the identify study compared uh, you know there are three arms that they compared it's a multi-center study 
burst uh, led by burst and um, the, it compared visible hematuria non visible hematuria and also retrospectively bladder cancers that was that were not presented with hematuria and for visible hematuria uh, the uh, incidence of bladder cancer in this one uh, almost similar to the kadra or edward study so it is 22.4 and uh, sorry protractive arterial cancer was 1.6 percent so I, I would highly suggest to be aware of the identify study and also yes. uh, the, it, you, you can now get a scenario where the patient is not willing for a flexible cystoscopy in which case there is a identify risk calculator and just so you can introduce a risk calculator so it, it's nice to tell them that you are aware of the options the, uh, the identify risk calculator will um, give us a number and depending on if it is less than 5% or if the risk is more than 20% we can divide into low intermediate and high risk so we can counsel the patient based on that if the patient is a high risk and if the patient doesn't want flexible cystoscopy we can counsel that see this is the number and you are at high risk of developing a of having a bladder cancer um, only if that situation arises. otherwise you can just mention that uh, we, we can, uh, you, you will counsel the patient on the risk of bladder cancer using an identifier risk calculator, which is really good because that's why we do, we do all these studies, isn't it? Yes. yes. And regarding, no concerns regarding the investigation part, everything was uh, straightforward. Cytology, yeah, that's always a catch point. Uh, you don't have to bring that in because yes. once, you, once you say that, then uh, it's like going down the rabbit hole. So uh, never maybe, uh, mention only the things that we really do, especially because when the patient is having an ongoing visible hematuria, there is not much of role of cytology because it's very difficult for the pathologist to identify because there is lots of RBC. There will be lots of RBCs in that yes. uh, specimen. So very, very difficult for them to identify a high risk tumor. Then uh, coming to the counseling part, it was really good. You involved the nurse, you gave the, but it, it can, uh, I, I would think it can be really, um, you can trim it down to 40 seconds or 60 seconds. Okay. You have to, because th th that one won't give you much, that is just to assess how you approach the patient. You won't get much okay. more on that one. But you will get more mark on how you do a resection because that is what that is more important, isn't it? So yes. when you come to the reception, uh, no concerns again. Oh, I, I, I'm because there are two two, uh, two schools of thought. Why why do, why do you want to do a normal cystoscopy first? Because you already did the flexible cystoscopy. You know what it is there. So uh, so that depends on whether I have a um, NBI with my flexible cystoscopy in the clinic or not. We don't have one, so I do it in theater. Uh, but you can do that with a resectoscope, isn't it? You can do it with the resectoscope as well. Yeah, because yeah. that's a camera that matters. And it is a filter that you can change. Even for PDD, you don't yes. have. You can go with the resectoscope. True, true. Because Absolutely. It's a, uh, uh, the scope doesn't matter. So maybe that question might arise why you, do, why you want to do a cystoscopy first and then do a... Um, um, I mean, uh, so the, uh, then introducing the research scope later. So that one, that, that question might arise. Um, yes. EUA, very important. You covered that one. No concern about that. Um, and yeah, um, resection, it's better to introduce the, because all these are based on the EAU guidelines, isn't it? Because the NICE guidelines is 2015. Yes. Yet, yet, to, yet to get updated. So we have to rely on EAU guidelines for all the new things. Um, so according to the AU guidelines, there are two types that is described, isn't it? You can do either the piecemeal resection or the on block resection. Yes. So it is better because what you described is a piecemeal resection. So you can you can bring that term. I'll do it as a piecemeal resection, where I remove the exophytic uh, uh, part first. One, two. Then I remove. Uh, I, I will do some deeper resections. Two and three. I'll make sure that the edges are resected as well. So there are three yes. steps for uh, piecemeal resection. Again, you can say that I uh, one question is asked is how are you going to measure the size of the tumor? You can say so. Measure look uh, if it's a small tumor. Sorry, you can measure it according uh, by by the side of the loop, the resection loop. If it's a small tumor, uh, so how do you measure that? Um, I think across it's about uh, it's about eight millimeters or so, but I'm not entirely sure. Yeah, you say that is one centimeter, isn't it? Sorry? 
I, I, EAU says that it is 1 cm. The loop is 1 cm, isn't it? Uh, I, I have to look that up. Yeah, so Thanks. that's why. Um, so previously we didn't have the answer for that, but EAU luckily came up with that one. So you okay. can say that. I mean, it, it, uh, so that's why, how we measure it. And yes. how once you measure it, because that's very important. And a uh, couple of things I would think that was missed to us. Um, everything went well. You put the mitomycin. The question is how long you will keep the mitomycin for? Because that's the question that that's the answer that the examiner is looking. Otherwise, if the examiner has to ask that question, that means that that's a print. Yes. So how long you will keep it for? So that's uh, 40 milligram, 40 ml for one hour. One hour, yeah, excellent. I said 40 minutes, I'm sorry. Yeah, because we have study between 30 minutes and one hour. And we know that one hour is better than 30 minutes in preventing the recurrence, but there is no study comparing one hour and two hour. So yes. that's why we rely on one hour. Um, and again, comparing, uh, you have to uh, think about the op notes. You have to, th you have to say that you will record everything in operative findings in a better to use a proforma, especially in TURBT. Yes. Uh, because, you know, the research study yes. is ongoing now. And uh, uh, from the what we learned from the research study is if you have a proforma, then the your standard of recession goes up. Yes. And the chance of recurrence can also come down when you have a profile. And the recording will be good. Can you please repeat that with the research study? So research study looked into mainly four parameters, isn't it? So they looked into the tosser muscle in intravesic installation, uh, TORBT proforma, um, and there was one more variable that they looked for. Uh, so, uh, uh, how much you r uh, record in a TRBT performer is one of the variables and they say that if you use a performer, the quality of your recording, the quality of your resection, the chance of recurrence is less because um, you are, because you, if your recording is good, that means that you have to record everything, isn't it? How many tumors, uh, uh, whether you, you, you have used the adjuvant like a PDD or a NBI, things like that. Um, Okay, thank you. And that is based on um, a paper by Maria Pen. We will come across it. I think it was in 2020 they published that one using a TRBT specific performer has got the advantage. Uh, Mr. Bushkan, there is echo with your voice. Oh, sorry. Uh, is there, there is echo in, with your voice. Can you correct, please? Um, I'm not sure I can how I can do this. So sh l let me do one thing. I is it better now? So I can hear you quite clearly, except that once in a while the signal uh, cuts off briefly, very briefly. But there's no echo on my side. Oh, okay. So um, what they say is um, for the uh, com completeness of resection. Can you hear me now better? Yes, we can hear you better now, and there is no echo. Excellent. So yeah, I remember now. So. Um, the RESAC study mainly looked into four parameters. One is the detrusor muscle present or not, whether you are giving single um, dose of intravesical mitomycin, and whether whether you document in a operation notes the completeness of resection, and whether you are using a proforma to record the number, size, and tumor location. So it is better to say that I will use a TRBT specific performer because everyone is aware of RASAC now. So if you put uh, that keyword there, then you can show that you are aware of the um, newer things going on in the field of um, uh, bladder cancer. Can you hear okay. me? Okay, excellent. What else? And, uh, and, and yeah, it's always better to say that I will review the patient afterwards. You said that you will remove the catheter yourself, but in a way that if, it, if you can say that I will review the patient afterwards and make sure that there is no uh, other signs. Mainly we yes. are looking for any perforation and making sure that he can be discharged, he or she can be discharged on the same day. Okay. Excellent. Hope that was helpful. Um, Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Shall we go for the next one? <laughs> oh, yeah. Excellent. So um, you are sitting in the MGT and this patient's histology is being discussed. What all things you need to know from the histopathology report? 
from the histopathology report, I would uh, like to know the T stage of the tumor. I would also want to know about the grade of the tumor. Um, other is whether it's a multifocal or a single uh, tumor, the size of the tumor, uh, whether it is more than or less than three centimeters because we restratify uh, or do a calculator to find out the evidence of recurrence of progression um, and any evidence of CIS. Okay, so the pathology says that it is G2 PTA high grade and from the op notes we know that it is a three centimeter single or solitary lesion uh, in the right lateral wall. The op note says that it is complete resection and there is no muscle in the specimen. So, right. Yeah, how would you want to take it further? Yeah, so of course I missed on that part that I would have asked for a muscle present or not. In this case, he's got a high grade TA uh, tumor. Uh, I would um, uh, uh, call back the patient in my clinic and discuss with him about the further management plan. I would uh, counsel him for a, a re-resection or a restage TURBT in a two to four weeks time. Um, uh, I would also um, obviously do a risk uh, calculation uh, by the EORTC to find out about the risk of uh, recurrence and progression based on the parameters which I mentioned and plan for a restage TURBT. Okay. so. What risk category is this patient? Uh, he is into high risk uh, uh, risk stratification based on the NICE guidelines. Uh, it is a PTA. Oh, uh, sorry, uh, sorry, I missed on. I think it's G two uh, high grade. You mentioned three centimeter. Yes, so he, he land. He is into intermediate risk stratification. I'm sorry on that. Okay, so um, you decided for a repeat TRBT, re -TRBT. what's the reason for re uh, for for, uh, for a high grade disease uh, it is seen that there is a I mean um, one one evidence uh, is basically the muscle was not uh, present in the specimen so for completeness of the staging I would plan to do a re resection in this case um, secondly there is chance for upstage or upgrade of the disease in case of uh, high grade tumors uh, by the tune of about 15 to 20 percent uh, so for that reason also I would consider uh, doing a restage TRBT. Okay. Will you instill uh, mitomycin C when you do re -TRBT? Uh So the, the benefit of uh, instilling mitomycin C again uh, on a restage TRBT would be if there is less than one recurrence uh, present or when the EORTC uh, calculation score is less than five, then definitely there's a benefit of uh, insulin mitomycin C. Okay. So your patient agrees for repeat TRBT and you did the re TRBT and when you are in the MDT again, this time the pathologist says that there's an upstaging as you have suspected. It is T1G3. Uh, muscle is present again, but not involved. Okay. Uh, and okay. Uh, uh, so this time yeah. you have used the photodynamic diagnosis. So hopefully there is no other tumors left. Uh, what is photodynamic diagnosis? So a uh, photodynamic diagnosis or a blue light cystoscopy is basically used to find out any evidence of uh, concurrent lesions in the bladder. Uh, it is a process where we instill 5-aminolevinolic acid into the bladder one hour prior to the surgery and we use a blue light uh, uh, which, which has a wavelength of about 450 nanometers. The tumor cells are picked up uh, which shows a red fluorescence and we can biopsy or subsequently resect these lesions. It is shown that we, uh, the, uh, to reduce the risk of recurrence to the tune of 10%, and also it has picked up higher uh, high grade as well as carcinoma in C2s uh, in cases. I'm also aware of the photo trial uh, which showed comparison of photodynamic versus uh, standard TURBT but there was no evidence, no benefit uh, of three year recurrence free uh, disease in uh, both the study groups. Okay, excellent. So you are sitting in the, you are, you are the bladder cancer lead for this uh, MDT. What are you going to do for this patient? Uh, so he's now got an upgrade of this disease to T1 uh, G2 disease. In this case, um, I would um, uh, 
uh, call back the patient to my clinic in presence of a cancer nurse specialist. Uh, also, I would like to ask a family member along with the patient and discuss about the further management plans. I would uh, counsel him for two options. One is going for an intravesical adjuvant uh, uh, immunotherapy in the form of BCG or uh, counsel him for uh, early radical cystectomy as well. Okay, what is the advantage of uh, having a early radical cystectomy? Uh, well, the, the advantage of early radical cystectomy, uh, it is seen that the patients who have an upfront muscle invasive disease as compared to a patient who had a high risk, I mean, T1 disease, which progresses to muscle invasion later on, the survival is poor in, in the second uh, uh, group of patients. Mm, any numbers for that? Um, I mean, the five year survival is up to 60% in, in patients who have progressed from a T1 to muscle invasive as compared to um, uh, upfront muscle invasive disease. But I'm not sure about the numbers, I guess. Okay, you said it right. What right. is the um, mechanism of action of BCG? Right, uh, BCG is basically a bacillus uh, calamid urine. It is a live attenuated uh, mycobacterium bovis. It uh, attaches to the urothelial cells by the, by the fibrone fibronectin receptor and enhances the immune system, leading to the uh, killing of the tumor cells. Okay. And what are the side effects of BCG that you would counsel the patient for? Right. Uh, so the side effects for the BCG uh, mainly are lower urinary tract symptoms, uh, which could be bothersome sometimes in the form of frequency, urgencies, uh, hematuria. Uh, um, he could have uh, BCG cystitis, which again presents with low urinary tract symptoms. Sometimes there could be a, uh, organ involvement in the form of granulomatous prostatitis or epididymorchitis as well. And very rarely systemic symptoms in the form of high grade fevers uh, can manifest as well. Okay. And how will you plan the BCG? What, what, what is the regime that you will plan for this gentleman? Uh, so he has got a, a T1 disease. Clearly, it's a high risk uh, stratification based on NICE guidelines. I would plan him for a, a, a BCG regimen based on LAMS regimen, which includes 27 installation. Uh, initially, induction uh, uh, phase, which it, which will include six ins installations uh, one weekly, and subsequently uh, maintenance phase, where he'll receive three uh, uh, installations at three months, six months. Uh, um, and from there on every six months till three years. Okay. So, um, this patient, uh, when you discuss with him, he is willing to have the BCG. Uh, what type of BCG strain is used in your hospital? Uh, well, um, I'm aware of a few strains, but I'm not sure which strain we use. So, I know of Danish 1331 pasture, cannot, and RVIM stain, but uh, I'm really sorry, I don't know the stain which I'm, we are using at this moment. Okay, so uh, you refer him to the nurse led clinic for the intravesical BCG installation and uh, um, your nurse has referred him back after the induction uh, phase and you did the flexible cystoscopy uh, three, uh, after the um, after three months after the initial in induction phase. Now, when he comes back, you can see a papillary appearing tumor in the posterior wall. What? Okay. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. So, um, I will uh, again um, put this case in our MDT meeting for further plan of management and counsel the patient for a, a TURBT or, uh, or probably a cystoscopy and biopsy to find out the the stage of the, the tumor. Okay. So why this uh, this has recurred? What is this, what is this condition called? So in this case, he mightly be uh, he likely might be having a BCG um, um, a refractory disease. Um, I mean, depending on the histology we we find on the the uh, the surgery. Okay. So the histology shows it is T one G three T R B T histology. Yeah, so clearly he has a, a, a BCG refractory disease. Uh, in, in this case, he's not likely to further respond to BCG therapy and I would counsel him for an early radical cystectomy. Are there any other options? Uh, 
if the patient is not uh, the other on, yeah so if patient is not feeling or is not fit enough for a major radical surgery uh, the other options are using electromotive uh, therapy uh, using mitomycin c or hyperthermia induced uh, uh, i mean insulation of mitomycin c as well okay uh, we'll stop there uh, so how was it okay i missed i mean i obviously goofed up on the beginning uh, histology itself you know i didn't realize it was g g2 high grade i thought it's t1 initially so i i said high risk and other uh, stuff so i, I started yeah. wrong on a wrong note actually no i mean uh, this is the catch point in always because the nice guy yeah. the nice guidelines says that pta g2 high grade is intermediate risk so whenever yeah always listen carefully whenever the histology says if it is ta g2 high grade uh, if you say that it is a eao then it is a high high grade i mean high risk disease isn't it high risk disease yes uh, yes yes, yes. Uh, depending yes. on three other parameters as well but still um, if you are sticking to nice guidelines which we, we almost follows in our M, follow in our mdt as well yeah so yeah, I agree. that's a catch point there because otherwise all high grade can be considered as high risk only pta g2 is considered to be high grade is considered e- to be intermediate risk e- yeah yeah yes yes, yes. That's, so, fair, yeah. that's a favorite I, question I of uh, examiners that's why it always comes yeah. through and uh, but uh, you you ca- um, there's no problem in that one because you came back you yeah. um because you did you didn't proceed with saying that it is a high risk so and um, uh, the repeat your bt yeah single slash mitomycin c is not usually um indicated because the indications okay. are okay the first one and also the eau guideline says that and also again this is from i think it is mari we have to confirm that uh, i think it is again para mari appen's paper um, where uh, it is give, uh, we give it for recurrences more than 12 months papillary recurrence more okay. than 12 months so these are the indications for uh, intravesical mitomycin c okay 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 i i, I don't know, i thought i i read it somewhere uh, that it will be benefiting for for eurtc probably with score less than 5 and less than 1 year recurrence a year kind of so uh, yeah maybe i might have to just yeah. check on this again because usually we give for these two indications here right okay and then um yeah you you said it right because the difference is 60% versus 90% you said about 60% and the other one yeah. is 90% if you are um um uh, give uh, i mean if you are going for a upfront cystectomy cystectomy yeah yeah and then um no other concerns regarding BC, uh, bcg strain yeah it's better uh, to know about it because that's a common I'll thing. check it yes so in our center we use ongo ties 81 mg okay. so better to know that um again you, uh, you you are updated about photo trial which is really good well done yeah yeah um systemic to, uh, things yeah i think we we have covered everything in that aspect i think there emda yeah. sometimes uh, there will be more questions on emda uh, in the technology session so okay. how, how what are the principles behind emda uh same thing for hyperthermic mitomycin c how 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 would you install it what is the principle behind mitomycin c um okay sorry i mean i mean hyperthermic mitomycin c there is a good module in the bjui knowledge for bcg resistant bcg failure okay uh, or bcg relapse patients uh, yeah okay uh, uh, that's one of the good modules that i have uh, 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 that helped me to prepare on that aspect of the topic right definitely i'll have a look at it um shall we go for the last session then yes. thanks thank you um, can i just ask a couple of questions yeah. just quickly yeah, please mm, no problem um so as you as you said if it was high grade g2 pta if we and it and if you say that that was that would be high grade with eau guidelines mm-hmm. which way would the station then go or would they kind of call us back and say no what would it be according to nice because they want to discuss bcg it is better to discuss in the nice guidelines because in uk we follow that isn't it and okay. in which case it will be um mitomycin but again um if you it's a bit of controversy in that sense because possibly once the nice get nice guidelines gets updated 
that will go into the high risk we believe um, but it's all depends on um, showing you uh, I mean how you explain it if you say the only problem here was uh, when the answer was given it was said that it is high risk according to nice guidelines mm -hmm. yeah so okay that's so you have to say you know according to uh, nice according guidelines that actually intermediate risk exactly yeah and it okay. from, nice you know, nice and um, and then can, could you just clarify um, with BCG in terms of flexible cystoscopy and rigid cystoscopy um, how frequently it's done because I've read so many different things mm. Do you do flexible cystoscopy after the first six weeks, after the first induction of BCG? Or is it a rigid in a biopsy? Uh, there is no, uh, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm not sure whether there is any specific guidance given for that. It says that cystoscopy, so it depends on your sender. In our sender, we, use, we do the uh, flexible cystoscopy and if there is anything uh, abnormal, then go for the uh, biopsy if needed. Okay, and then... Especially because this was a single tumor, Sorry. isn't it? Sorry, this was a single tumor, isn't it? Solitary tumor, less than three centimeter. So, and we use the PDD as well previously. So, uh, about the induction, we do uh, after six weeks, we do uh, after cystoscopy after six weeks. So, what about the maintenance dose? When do we uh, follow up those maintenance dose patients with flexible cystoscopy? Is there any uh, um, uh, schedule? Yeah. So, uh, the cystoscopy can be done six weeks after the BCG, where we think that the BCG cystitis will be better. So, we can, okay. you can schedule like I mean, that. So, we are in the main maintenance group, we are following six, uh, six months, 12 months, and then 18 months. So, after finishing the, uh, finishing the regimen, we wait for six weeks and do a flexible cystoscopy yeah. before the next one. Be before the next one, we have to do that because there is always the risk of this um, uh, BCG failure. Yeah, yeah, thank you. And um, uh, uh, it was really good that the previous candidate said about that difference of 60 and 90 percent because that's the thing that makes a difference. We have to counsel the patient based on that um, because he's only 68, he's fit and well. And uh, one of the questions that can be asked is if the patient agrees for a cystectomy, will you give any adjuvant chemotherapy? But we don't have any evidence for that, isn't it, in these cases? Okay. Um, excellent. So, shall we go for the last one then? Yes. So, you, you are sitting in the MDT and one of the cases being discussed is about a fit and well gentleman who is a chronic smoker. Uh, he is only 62 year old. Uh, he came with hematuria, upper tracts normal, uh, CT is not showing any lymph nodes or anything in the uh, pelvis or in the uh, other parts of the abdomen, just this also, uh, sorry, CT is normal completely, CT abdomen and pelvis is completely normal, but the TRBT shows muscle invasive bladder cancer, T2. Um, okay. Uh, any other muscle cancer T2. Okay. What are the other investi What other investigations uh, would you prefer to have for this patient? So uh, this patient already had a CT scan uh, with no metastasis. So uh, I can uh, do an MRI of the bladder uh, to look at uh, uh, to stage the bladder again. Uh, if I feel that um, uh, I need to further look uh, for the blood bladder invasion, MRI of the bladder. Um, the patient already had no lymph nodes, uh, so uh, I, I won't be doing any kind of PET CT scan to find out an indeterminate lesion. I would like to do a chest CT scan to have a look whether it's metastasis to the bladder. And also, if there is any complaint of bone pain, uh, I would like to do a bone scan. Okay. So, what's the classification of um, used in the bladder MRI? Uh, classification of bladder MRI. Okay. okay. Uh, so it's, uh, sorry, I can't remember that. Can I come back to that again? Yeah, sure. So how, how do you classify the end staging in TNM? So TNM end staging is done uh, when there is a uh, N1 uh, is uh, when there uh, NO is no lymph nodes, NX is uh, uh, undetermined. N1 is uh, when there is a single uh, pelvic lymph node 
um, uh, and uh, uh, and uh, and into his multiple pelvic lymph node and M3 is uh, 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 non-regional lymph nodes. Okay. Okay. So um, this patient is um, his pathological staging is T2. Uh, MRI bladder uh, including the pelvic area and the CT doesn't show any lymph nodes in the pelvis. Chest is clear. Uh, no other symptoms, no bone pain, no headache, no other symptoms. Uh, he's otherwise fit and well. What will be your plan for this patient? So I will, uh, uh, this is a fit and well, although a smoker, 62 year old, uh, old male patient. Uh, uh, I will offer him a radical cystectomy uh, as a standard of care. Um, uh, and also I will offer him the alternate options such as uh, radical radiotherapy. Um, uh, uh, and uh, options of doing nothing, uh, which means that it's already an invasive disease and it will likely to progress and metastasize soon. Uh, so these are the options I'll give the patient. Uh, I will see this patient uh, in my clinic um, uh, in presence of cancer nurse specialist. Uh, I will give him the bowel information leaflet regarding uh, uh, radical cystectomy uh, and also about radical ther therapy. And uh, I will discuss in brief uh, about his histology and uh, about, uh, about uh, that, about uh, what are his treatment options and uh, what are his chances of uh, success rates uh, following radical cystectomy. Having a T2 disease, uh, we are expecting a five year survival rate of 60% um, uh, and uh, with no lymph node metastasis. That is, and uh, I will go through the radical cystectomy uh, option with him uh, and. Uh, before um, uh, and discuss with him in the MDT meeting. Okay. What's the role of neoadjuvant chemotherapy in this patient? So, uh, this patient, uh, 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 neoadjuvant chemotherapy, uh, if there is no lymph nodes, uh, uh, I think uh, there is no option for uh, neoadjuvant chemotherapy uh, at this point. Uh, but, um, uh, User is cisplatin based chemotherapy is given. Uh, sorry, this in my head at moment about this. Okay, and how um, you said that you will counsel for the radical cystectomy, isn't it? So, what approach will you counsel him for? So, the radical cystectomy can be done by open or uh, robotic approach. Uh, so. Uh, 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 so in uh, it, it has a high mod uh, it has a, uh, a mortality rate of three percent and a morbidity rate of thirty percent and uh, uh, the uh, the patient uh, will have his bladder removed and the uh, another conduit preferably an ileal conduit will be performed to drain his urine so there will be a stoma to to one of, of the side of his abdomen to drain the urine. The patient, uh, depending on the histology uh, after radical cystectomy uh, and, uh, and the histopathology, may require adjuvant treatment options, such as adjuvant chemotherapy, if he had any, had any chemotherapy. Uh, I will talk him through about the risk of uh, having radical cystectomy, which includes uh, um, infection, bleeding, um, um, early and late uh, complications. Early complications include um, uh, paraparative bleeding, uh, in, uh, uh, injury to the surrounding organs such as bowel, big vessels, uh, injury to the rectum, uh, and also injury to the vessels. Uh, early complication can be lymphocele after lymphadenectomy, and uh, they can be anastomotic dehiscence, um, uh, uh, and also uh, they can be uh, burst up uh, abdominal wound dehiscence uh, in the early postoperative period. Uh, they can be uh, in the late complication, it can be either uh, following in the ileal conduit, they can be uh, parastomal hernias, uh, they can be a stricture of the ureter uh, ileal, uh, ileal anastomosis, uh, and um, uh, uh, they can be recurrence of tumor in the upper tract later on. So he should be having a surveillance for that. Okay. And is there any evidence to compare the outcome between robotic and open, open cystectomy? Uh, so I'm aware of an evidence uh, that uh, uh, there is uh, uh, there is literally uh, the, in the robotic uh, cystectomies uh, uh, the patient hospital stay is short and uh, patient recovery is uh, is quick uh, and uh, less blood loss in compared with the open. Uh, uh, so, but the oncological uh, outcome uh, I think is the, is the same. Okay. 
Uh, what is eros? So eros uh, is extend uh, is is a extended recovery uh, uh, early recovery uh, 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 protocol uh, for in in a in a patient having a, a major surgery where uh, the patient uh, uh, recovery is enhanced uh, by giving uh, by setting him to a, a specified protocol. Uh, so uh, he's given uh, so his early mobilization and early internal feeding is ensured and also the pain uh, effective management of pain control so that the patient recovers early and uh, having a short hospital stay as well as uh, avoiding complications okay so uh, your patient agrees for uh, I mean uh, he wants to go, go ahead with a robotic uh, radical cystectomy regarding the lymph node dissection what level of lymph node dissection would you prefer? So, uh, in, the, in this pre-operative CT scan, there were no lymph nodes. Uh, so, I will clinically look for whether there is an obvious uh, enlarged lymph node on my uh, during the, my pre-operative period. I usually do a standard lymph node dissection, which is uh, uh, if, if, which is a lymph node dissection of the uh, of the uh, pelvic lymph node uh, up to the bifurcation of the common iliacs. So it, it includes the uh, external iliac, internal iliac, and obturator nodes, and also um, um, uh, and also uh, lymph nodes uh, up to the bifurcation of the common iliac. And what are the lateral boundary and medial boundary and the um, inferior boundaries? So, uh, so medial boundary is the bladder itself. Lateral boundary is uh, the um, obturator nerve. And uh, uh, and uh, and the superior boundary is at the bifurcation of the iliacs. And below is the crocket ligament, I think. Okay. Look at uh, the notes. Yeah. And for the urinary diversion, um, yeah. what are the different types of urinary diversion? So urinary diversion can be continent, can be uh, can be incontinent urinary diversion, can be continent urinary diversion. So continent urinary diversion, uh, the patient can have an uh, orthotopic bladder uh, with a radical cystectomy, uh, so it can be continent. Uh, they can be a, a Indiana pouch uh, uh, with a uh, with a continent uh, meter, with a with a meter of, uh, to make it a continent um, uh, urinary diversion. Uh, and about the incontinent urine diversion, the blood the, it's just a conduit which drains the urine into a bag, stoma outside. Uh, so uh, it is uh, namely um, allele conduit. Okay. So, what's the difference? I mean, what is the advantage of allele conduit over a continent urinary diversion? So, uh, uh, so allele conduit. Uh, in terms of uh, a long term, uh, long term, uh, uh, I think uh, performance and long term. Uh, uh, in, in, in terms of long term, the allele conduit has the uh, has the better, uh, uh, better chance, uh, better. Uh, I think better success uh, in uh, compared with the uh, incontinent uh, continent urine diversions, um, and uh, the. Success rates um, uh, uh, in uh, uh, in the incontinent urinary diversions usually um, uh, the patient has to self catheterize to empty the bladder if he has an orthotopic bladder um, uh, and so he should be aware of that and he should be maintaining that with a good hand function and recognize and with the also comes with complications orthotopic bladder can late complication can include um, the, um, uh, a rupture of the anastomosis uh, bladder perforations. Mucus plug formations and uh, chance of secondary and uh, chance of malignancy recurrence uh, uh, in that areas uh, and also um, the, about the ileal conduit. There also is not a uh, devoid of complication too. So they can be parastomal hernias, uh, stomal stenosis, stomal, uh, stomal ischemia, and as well as um, uh, there can be metabolic complication, hyperchromic metabolic acidosis, which has to be looked at uh, in ileal conduit. Yes, in all of them, in any kind of urinary diversion, uh, hyperchromic uh, metabolic uh, acidosis. But usually these are, these are less pronounced. If the patient does not have severe uh, renal or liver failure, this, this doesn't usually become apparent. Okay. But if it's apparent, it can be managed by sodium bicarbonate. Uh, what are the contraindications for a orthotopic neobladder? So, if the patient has a, a, a tumor in the prostatic urethra, if there is widespread widespread CIS, um, uh, and the, if the patient has uh, poor hand function, severe renal or hepatic uh, severe renal or hepatic failure, these are usually the contraindications.
Okay. So we'll stop there. Okay. Um, how was it? Uh, it wasn't good. It wasn't good at all. <laughs> it was good. <laughs> I wouldn't say it wasn't good. good. It wasn't good. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, in the sense that um, uh, New Arjun chemotherapy, I think we should give New Arjun chemotherapy for all patients because it's not, uh, our concern is not um, the nodes or anything, isn't it? It's like it's, it's a micrometastasis, possibly beyond okay. the uh, okay. level of the invasion, which are not picked up by the scans. Okay. And also the five year, uh, you know, we, we all know that the five year uh, survival of radical cystectomy is yeah. only 50%. And uh, even um, the, the, uh, the audit data, the BOWS audit data shows that it was around 30% at one year. So, there's a, high, yeah, there's a high mortality rate for after uh, radical cystectomy. Uh, so that's why in your joint and uh, regarding uh, sometimes uh, because um, um, that evidence will come uh, that I mean, that question will come definitely if you are asking uh, um, discussing on your joint chemotherapy, the standard is to give your joint chemotherapy. Um, and um, the evidence, uh, do you know the evidence, uh, just to discuss about the evidence, do you know the evidence of near joint chemotherapy? Uh, sorry, I haven't revised blood for a long time, I forgot. Okay, okay it's fine. So, I mean, uh, blood cancer. Yeah. Uh, ABC trial, but you have to uh, um, re realize that it is. it was done in 2005, I believe. So it was like years ago that evidence, 8% improvement in five years with a number need to treat of 12.5 but there are newer newer trials in 2016 uh, there was a meta-analysis by yin that is being for that, 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 that's what the eau guideline says so it's better to say that abc is a classic trial it is one of the landmark trial for near gene chemotherapy but don't, don't stop with that because that trial was done in 2005 so it was like almost 15 15 18 um, uh, more than 17 years ago and it's always better to bring the new meta-analysis in meta-analysis in 2016 um, and the yin meta-analysis in 2016 what percentage uh, survival benefit uh, does it show eight percent so the abc was five isn't it so yes. this was eight so that's why we say that five to eight five to eight okay so yin said eight okay thank you and uh, uh, I mean, there, I mean th th this is one of the difficult scenario if you haven't this is about this is this, this is a scenario that I got for my bladder cancer st station so uh, uh, all these um, um, boundaries of dissection what is extended lymph node dissection all these questions can come and eras it's very very important that you have to have your own uh, way of explaining what is eras um, okay. Saying that it, it, because it starts a couple, couple of key words that you have to remember for it is, it is enhanced recovery after surgery, uh, and uh, it, it starts before the surgery, isn't it? So it is a series of um, steps or series of uh, pathways that we follow, starting before the surgery, preoperatively, and intraoperatively, and postoperatively, and you can say a couple of things like uh, preoperatively optimizing the patient optimizing the hemoglobin um, uh, and then intraoperatively using the minimally invasive techniques uh, avoiding a drain if possible and postoperatively removing the catheter early sufficiently early enough as permissible um, not not if a orthotopic but otherwise and then trying to mobilize the patient uh, avoiding opioids to prevent constipation things like that so a couple of okay. things only you have to talk about it like 40 seconds um, <laughs> When yeah. I, I heard you, uh, Anish, in one of the videos, you said that it is a group of multidisciplinary, uh, multimodal oh, group of of uh, programs hmm. uh, that involve the patient before admission, during admission, and after uh, intraoperatively and postoperatively as well. Yeah, um, there is a good paper on that one, but uh, the problem with um, not the problem, the challenge with FRCS is to. Um, say everything in 40 seconds so each question you have to modify to answer in within 40 seconds so that's why we have to rely on the keywords can i just um, just confirm uh anish that the boundaries for, so for bladder cancer cystectomy uh liver dissection it's up till uh level two isn't it level two yeah so level one is um, uh, below the uh, common iliac, mm -hmm. the division of the common iliac yeah. artery. Um, and level 
two is um, above the common iliac but below the bifurcation of the aorta mm -hmm. and level three is uh, the, which is going to be uh, super extended which is above uh, the bifurcation of um, uh, aorta up below the IV IMA. Mm. So we can say that standard extended and super extended because there was no lymph nodes in this one uh, even you, if you go for a standard with the boundaries genitive femoral nerve um, uh, and the inguinal ligament or the clockets canal in the lower part and the common iliac artery bifurcation that should be acceptable and then and then the medial border is the uh, ureter lateral border of the ureter, lateral border of the ureter. even if you say bladder because in, in some places it's known as bladder but that's also acceptable Okay. Um, and again, uh, why we are doing the uh, lymph node dissection? Because um, it can improve the uh, overall survival, isn't it? Because if it is, if, uh, no, no, it can predict the overall, not improve. It, it can predict the overall survival because if it is N0, PN0, then survival is 80%, whereas it is half, 40% if it is lymph node is involved, N1. And but to predict that you have to remove at least more than 10 lymph nodes. Uh, and these are standard because we have to uh, when, when you 